sound that this arrangement of um, flesh and bone wants to make is absolutely nothing like the sound Hank made. Um, so it was a it was a journey of a thousand miles, um, to be honest. Um, but it was it was it was there's a lot of joy on the way. Yeah. There was some there was some sweat and tears and some sleepless nights, but um, it was a uh, it was great. How did you get to a point where you felt like okay, I'm there? Did you keep singing and recording it and playing it back and adjudicating yourself? Did you rely on Rodney Crowell, who you were working with, to tell you you've now got it? How did you feel like I'm there? We were, we were both. I, so I moved in with a, um, a musician called Rodney Crowell in Nashville, who who remembers seeing Hank on his own father's shoulders at the age of two, and it's one of his earliest memories. And he has such an admiration and respect. And we we we. We spent about five weeks in his studio every day just singing and playing and singing and playing. And there were some songs that came very easily, very quickly. Um, I think I recorded Why Would You Love Me, uh, the song he's singing when he meets Billie Jean, in 40 minutes. Um, and it took me about 10 days to get Love Sick Blues because the, the, the technicality of that yodel is so precise. And <laughs> the rhythm of the, he's basically singing out of meter. Um, he's, and he's, he puts the chorus of the verse, and the verse is the chorus, and and, um, and I would listen to it, thinking, how are you doing that? Um, and Rodney would make Rodney was was so village, uh, um, so vigilant in sort of protecting the music, um, and there were so many things to hit. We had I had to be rhythmically right, the pitch had to be perfect, and at the same time I had to transmit the power of the song. I had to be inside the song, and sometimes it'd be sitting at the sound desk every 10 o'clock at night. <coughs> Rodney would say, okay, Tom, your rhythm was good, your pitch was fine, uh, but I didn't really hear the pain, so <laughs> you gotta go again. So I, mean, I, I and there were days when I thought I was never gonna get it, but um, it was great. And there was, it, it, I always, he and I used to talk about this. There was a day when I, it clicked for me, Love Sick Blues particularly, and we'd been singing it all morning, and it felt like I had been swimming in the ocean through seaweed. And I just, it was difficult and it was unpleasant. And it was, it was sort of, I couldn't really get into my stride. And then suddenly I was in clear water. And it was so exciting because I felt like I was in control of my voice. And I could hit those, 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 those moments in the song where he's so free. And so charismatic and so flirtatious, frankly. That's a song where he's flirting with the audience, you know. Um, so that was a good day. Well done when uh, Jimmy Kill put you on the spot, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, um, yeah. Ren, I've done a lot of these talks with people from Black Mass, the Johnny Depp movie, and they say that, they say that, I'm going to try to speak up so you can hear me because I don't think this is working. Oh, there. And the people who were in Black Mass with Johnny Depp, a lot of them say they never met Johnny Depp until after the movie was over. They only met Whitey Bulger. When you were filming, did you meet Tom Middleston or did you only meet Hank Williams? You mean filming or in general? Both. Okay, um, so I met Tom initially, um, early on, as soon as I got there, which is kind of lovely. Our director brought me over so that Tom and I could meet each other. And then we had dinner together and kind of talked about our character storyline. But I have to say, I mean, you don't, you don't really walk around in character, although you're kind of playing around with it. But I mean, it's, it's really fascinating because the minute it's, you know, the minute we're rolling, he's in it. Right. And it's a little bit like, well, he's really in it. <laughs> okay, I need to be in it too. <laughs> yeah. I remember Tom when I saw the movie six months ago at the Toronto Film Festival. And then when I talk to you afterwards, you're such an animated, lovely guy. And in the movie, there are many moments where you have to turn the charm <laughs> off. Hmm. How difficult was that as someone who is, you know, kind of like a nice, pleasant person to be around? Right? This is a stretch. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I, I think it's just about, about inhabiting the, 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 the truth that he's in in that moment. I mean, um, I think it's somehow something, something to do with um, it's interesting, people talk about film acting in a, in a, in a particular language, that the actors are required to be in the moment. Yeah. And sometimes, actually, you're required to be completely out of the moment, to be in a very different moment that nobody else is in. 
Um, and so the moment might, you know, the moment might be it's late, you've, you've got an hour left for sunlight, you have to get the scene before the sun goes down. And, and most people on set have a very practical job to do, um, whether that be um, arranging focus marks for the camera or moving the lights or, or trying to find a place where the boom is out of shot. And um, they're tired and hungry and it's Friday and, and we've been working all week and you're shooting a scene where Hank is at rock bottom. Uh, some desolate spiritual place where he's sort of so alone mm. and, and so sad. And, and so an act of discipline is to take yourself away from the present moment and put yourself in another moment um, and go there. And just go there. And, and, and all acting really is, is a commitment of, uh, of emotional belief in an imagined circumstance. Is to make is to make something that isn't happening real in your own in your own mind, and so that's the that's the challenge really is just to commit to his truth. Ren, what did you enjoy learning about Bobby and in particular the relationship between the two of them when you were researching it and reading about her? Well, I feel like I, a few times I've been asked about that. I don't really have a great response because there's not a lot out there about her. I mean, she. I mean, even if you just do a quick Google search, you find far more information about her daughter, Jet Williams, who's a country music star in her own right. Um, and you'll find like bits and bobs about about her, but nothing that's really in relationship to Hank. It's very kind of piecemeal. There's a photo, I believe, of her as she was a showgirl for a time. So there's a photo where somebody's kind of singled out her face. Um, but yeah, there's not a lot to go on. I feel like there's there's kind of also bits and bobs that are in the Hank Williams biography, um, which our director sent to me. And he actually, because there's a few, he sent me just like a few pages where she mentioned. Um, was that frustrating or was it free? Well, I, I feel like it was freeing in some ways because I, I didn't kind of have to carry the mantle of somebody as big as Hank with as, as much material as there is. Um, I kind of felt like I could really just lean into what the script was, and that was my story that I was trying to tell, but I definitely felt like, because Jet Williams never knew her mother, I felt like it was, for me, that there was definitely the challenge of feeling like I was somehow honoring this woman and within this film with the story that she had with Hank Williams and trying to kind of really just be as true and honest to that as I could as far as our script went, but also just just her as a person and that she was a, a real person who had a relationship with him and deeply loved him and yeah, so that was that was actually the trickiest part for me was that there's not a lot but that she still has to enjoy. Alright, one more question for me before I open it up to you all. So many great costumes, rhinestones, fringe. <laughs> <laughs> what did you take home? I don't fit into any of those clothes anymore. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I took. I have a few hats, um, more than a few, and those boots. Those boots are amazing. A, you don't really see them, but, but um, uh, when I'm up on stage on the Opry, I'm wearing these blue and white cowboy boots with H W engraved on them. They're, they're shit kickers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have a microphone here, and when I call on you. We'll uh, have you ask the question into the mic. So here, right here in the front row. Please wait for the mic and speak into it loudly and clearly, okay? Thank okay. you. Hi, John. I'm Mike. Here, I'm with Tracy. Okay. <laughs> I tried. Hi, um, I was wondering when you play like roles, like something like Loki or Coriolanus for like a really long time, um, is it easier to like remove yourself from them because they're fictional versus like Hank, you kind of dive into his whole life and when you come away, is it hard to separate yourself? You know, I think every, every role has its own challenges in a way. Um, and it really depends on the intensity of the story and the intensity of the emotions you're called upon to, to, to bring to it. Um, you know, you mentioned uh, Corey Lane, is, I don't know how many people here know I, I played. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I played Corinne on stage in London. Corinne is, is, I think, possibly up there with King Lear, if not surpassing King Lear, as Shakespeare's uh, angriest character. He's, it, it's a really, it's really a, um, a 
play about the destructive power of rage. Um, and to have to summon the rage every single day was very, was very, I found very, very draining. Um, but this was, Hank was, was different. Hank was, um, I felt the responsibility very keenly um, because he is just, he's an icon. He's a cornerstone. If, if you read interviews with, with Bob Dylan or with Bruce Springsteen or with um, anyone really, that Hank is where it starts. And I wanted to do right by him and by his family and by the legacy. And so that if any of those people were to see it, they, I'd be like, they would know that I'd thrown everything I had at it. Um, but I, it was actually more, I, you know, I read the script, it was, you know, he, he, it was a lot of pain. He was a very tortured soul, as you now have seen, I hope. But there was, in the experience, there was so much joy that I didn't expect from signing up to it. And, and playing the music and inhabiting the music and then shooting it was actually a very joyful experience. And I, I got a sense of what it must have been like to be here in that, in that moment. Are you in the second room? Thank you for being here. Uh, it's a really good movie. Um, well, I know you have been uh, play so many different characters. Um, I wanted to know how to you change yourself and how to prepare yourself to be so many different characters. And, and one last question sure. is, uh, are you suggesting when you're shooting a movie? Say again. Uh, are you singing? Are you singing when you're in the movie? Yes, am I singing? So yes, I. That's me singing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the first question is really interesting, um, and it speaks to something that I believe about all of us, about identity, which I think is that we contain so much potential, and as human beings, we. we, we we contain multitudes. I contain what's that? It's, it's Whitman, Walt Whitman, the song of myself. We contain multitudes, and um, and part of what excites me about acting is um, is a commitment of myself towards different people, different things, um, different stories, different circumstances, and finding myself in all of those circumstances, and hopefully. Uh, and it really is a journey of, I believe in cinema and theater, and I, and I believe that it has the power to bring people together. Um, because what, what you see on screen, I, one hopes, and what you see on stage is, is universally true of all of us. And so in terms of playing different characters, I just think I'm expressing different aspects of the human condition. I think all actors do that. And the very best actors do it every time. Um, I, I, that's what I try to do. I don't maybe succeed every time, but but that's what that's what the the, the breadth and the range of it. That's what excites me about it. Is I haven't lived all of these lives, but I've understood and felt all of their feelings. You know, um, as we all have, and that's why I think that's why I think acting is exciting. All right, let's go a question further back. <laughs> um, that first song that you sang, the first one in the beginning, you killed that song. <laughs> but what I really want to ask you is, are you amazed that you can sing as well as you do? And then, were you a singer? Did you know you could sing? Uh, <laughs> Thank you, first of all. Um, and I, I basically am amazed that, I, that, 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 that anyone thinks I pulled this off. Um, <laughs> uh, because I, part of the reason I did it is because it terrified me. And I wanted to see if I could. Um, because I love music. Music's such a huge part of my life. Um, and I wanted to make a film about music. I wanted to make a film about how, how transporting music is. Um, and I wasn't sure I could do it, if I'm honest. And I, I never sang before, never. I was never in a band, I was never in the choir. Um, I, well, I, know, I suppose, I hope this doesn't sound arrogant, but I know I wasn't completely tone deaf. Um, <laughs> um, you know, I've sung Christmas carols before, and, and, uh, and 
not too shy in the karaoke booth. Of the game. <laughs> <laughs> but but <laughs> this is a different kind of undertaking. So it is a surprise. Yeah. I can't ignore this lovely woman. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Uh, I'm Isabel. I Hi, Isabel. gave you a hug and a folder. <laughs> How's that being at you? I, I just want to apologize if I made you feel uncomfortable that day. But I want to thank you because you took um, the chance to support a fan. My husband got a kick out of it. <laughs> okay. Um, I would like you to relay a message to Mark because he kept it up. Um, you guys were not good singing. You you were you were singing, and also I wanted to ask you, what is it about darkness in the characters that you've been playing lately that attracts you? Like, why is it darkness so important? Um, I think I think we're all bound together by by our pain. We're bound together by joy too, but nobody gets nobody gets through this life without without a rough patch. Yeah. And you could walk out on the street right now, and you could, and we could introduce ourselves to someone. They probably they know somebody who's having a rough time. Maybe they just their relationships in trouble, or their a family member is ill, or somebody just lost their job. Or, you know, it's it's it, it's true. This is true of the, of the human experience, and. And honestly, none of us seek it out. I, 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 maybe it's worth I've told this story before, but, but, but I haven't told it to you. Um, Yay! And uh, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was shooting the first Thor film with Kenneth Branagh, and uh, uh, as many of you may know, Anthony Hopkins plays uh, my father in that, and he invited me up to his house for breakfast, and he said a very fascinating thing. He said, you, you relate how many characters he's played in films. He's played kings and princes and war and warriors and poets and butlers, all kinds of characters. And people stop him in the street and they ask him about one man. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even have to say his name. <laughs> I could mention Father Beans <laughs> and a nice Chianti. Um, and he said, he said, it's, and he said it to me, to him, it was fascinating because it taught him something that we all want our lives to be full of love. And light, and, and laughter, and friendship, and kindness, and we we want to be happy, but we're all compelled by artists of every stripe, writers, musicians, actors, painters who who are courageous enough to explore our darker side, and that somehow the purpose of that there, there is a one of the purposes of art is to express that, and that there is catharsis. Um, in it, um, and, I, and in a way, that's what the scene with the reporter is in this film, where where Hank kind of lays it on the line and says, "Listen, I, you ask me what I what I think I'm doing. And this is it. I'm, I'm I'm singing about pain. I'm singing about everyday suffering that everybody feels, and and they don't have to take it home. Go pick someone in the way back. Yes. Go like all the that's way back." <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for a stunning performance. Um, I have a question regarding technique versus singing versus acting. Um, do you find that the technique of singing versus acting, which is more emotionally naked? Uh, singing, no question. Um, because it's newer for you, or just in in of itself? I think I think there's no filter in singing. Uh, it's so it has to be it's from the heart and if it isn't it doesn't tra translate it doesn't connect um it just doesn't work um and the reason we revere the singers the the the, 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 the very greats is because they have they seem to be they live they're as open as that every time all the time um i don't know who it is for you guys but there is you know we there are through the ages there are so many um and um, yeah, I found that I found that quite shocking because I realized there's no there's no way to hide. Um, but it was it's also a very powerful feeling as well, um, especially when you realize that the connection has been made. 
well, guys, I hate to say this, but they have to show the movie again right now. They have to leave the theater. But I want to thank you, and Rhett and Tom, thank you so much for being here. And guys, thank you so much for coming out. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.